Well, on this Valentine's Day, we just witnessed a partnership that appears to be working. Just before the mayor and Sacramento City Council members gathered for tonight's City Council meeting, I was at City Hall as the mayor learned the county will be helping the city bring back housing to Miller Park for the homeless. And we first brought you this story onto the point just last night. 80 tents were set up for the homeless at a site called Safe Ground around this time last year. And it's really meant to serve as transitional housing as people work to get into more permanent housing. But those tents were removed during January's storm and this lot, it's been empty ever since. So now tonight, the mayor is crediting the city and the county's new partnership in getting trailers, not tents, trailers moved in. So we just heard some major updates about safe ground at Miller Park. What can you tell us that just came down the pipeline? The city uh, just came to a, a, an agreement with the county of Sacramento to take one of the first steps in implementing our partnership agreement from uh, late 2022. Um, we're gonna reopen Miller Park temporarily um, and only temporarily and use some of the trailers that we have in storage that we use during COVID. So these would be 15 mobile homes, essentially trailers that we've had sitting in storage largely since the pandemic. These were equipment that we largely bought to shelter people with COVID. This Miller Park breakthrough will allow us to bring 40 to 50 people uh, from the streets into the trailers at a site that uh, we own and can control. We need more beds. And while um, I know I, I don't, uh, it's not my first choice to put tents out, out uh, in any one of our locations, the fact that we have these trailers that are sitting in storage makes uh, Miller Park a perfect match temporarily because once we are able to open one of these larger sites that, uh, that, that we are working on, then we won't use Miller Park for the long term. But for now, it gives us a chance to get a head start on this partnership agreement and to really start cleaning up the, the WX corridor in a humane way. We are working on some longer term solutions. I certainly would like us to see, I certainly would like to see Cal Expo. Uh, be used and opened um, as at least a temporary place uh, for uh, us to be able to uh, put tiny homes, pallet homes, trailers, and to have more people be able to get off the streets and, and to go there. Uh, we are looking at a couple of other real uh, significant options, good options in the south area, uh, but they're not ready yet. And do we know when the trailers are coming or when we can expect to see safe ground back up and running? I'm, I asked that question about uh, half an hour ago. Um, and so I know that our city management is talking to our Department of Public Works. I think it's just a matter of the logistics of, of transporting the trailers out to Miller Park and, um, and getting them set up. So I hope it will be very soon. There won't be tents. These will be trailers. Yeah, this will be as an upgrade from the tents in a way that there will be slight kind of walls around them um, versus the tents we had. Um, one of the challenges with Miller Park was always its proximity to the river. As much as I love that for, you know, the peace and the quiet and the scenery, when there was a storm or a wind event, um, that area tended to get hit pretty hard because there wasn't anything kind of buffering them from the wind and activity. So trailers are a much more stable option. And what do we know about the people who were living there? I mean, is this a successful site? It was really successful. So the typical positive exit rate for folks who are chronically in house, folks who've been on the street for a while, is in like the low 20s. We were getting to 40% at this site. Um, for whatever reason, for the folks who this site worked for, it was, I think, a natural on-ramp, an easier on-ramp than going straight indoors when folks had been outside for a while. We had several people move straight into permanent housing. I mean, we've had just dozens and dozens of people go into services, call family, start getting case management. Are you happy with the decision? I'm incredibly happy. I just, I think that in the end, we need every tool we can get at our disposal right now. When you're dealing with the level of crisis we're dealing with and the amount of human suffering, every tool in our disposal needs to be utilized. So to use a site that's worked well, to work with a provider that's working well, with a model that seems to be working well. What do you hope to see happen with Safe Ground? You know, I hope we continue to evolve the model. You know, I there are so many people on our streets that are in bad situations that are not only impacting the businesses and residents that they're around, but they themselves 
are lacking just the basic necessities of sleep and sanitation and food and safety. So I hope people don't just throw out the model because they might not like where it is or how it looks, but really take the lessons we've learned and apply it for the success of people who come next. And how do you feel the partnership is going so far? Well, this is a good start. I think it's going well. Um, I really do. I'm very appreciative of the county. I really want to reiterate that because I don't know that these kinds of agreements or conversations, frankly, would have happened a year or two ago. But it's, you know, the conversations that we've had, some of the, you know, challenging times we have had together, uh, the partnership agreement itself. All right, you already know, I'll be keeping my eye on this. The mayor adds that the county is going to provide the services for this site, and he thinks this is the beginning of a very important partnership for the city, county, and the entire region. Senator Dianne Feinstein's seat will be open soon, and Congressman Adam Schiff is looking to fill it. After the break, we're sitting down with Schiff one-on-one. -on -one. California's longest serving Senator Dianne Feinstein announced today that she will not run for re-election in 2024. At 89 years old, Feinstein is the oldest sitting member of Congress and her retirement brings an end to a 30 year long Senate career. She is the longest serving U.S. Senator from California and longest tenured female Senator. And in the U.S. Senate, where the balance of power is over a single seat, Democrats will be forced to do some soul searching. Who should replace Feinstein? So far, only Congress members Katie Porter and Adam Schiff have announced their plans to run. And Schiff became famous when he led the first impeachment trial against former President Trump and is on the House January 6th committee. He says that he knew Senator Feinstein's announcement was coming, just not today. And she has not said if she'll endorse him or not, but our Morgan Reiner sat down with Representative Schiff following today's announcement in the Reiner Report. I've heard you say several times uh, throughout this campaign of yours that you are running to protect democracy. What is it that you believe you can do to protect democracy in the Senate that you can't do from the House? Well, I authored uh, the package of our own post-Watergate-like reforms, reforms to strengthen our democratic institutions, to uh, attack the abuses of power we saw during the Trump administration. That package uh, passed the House. Um, but we can't get, get it through the Senate. Uh, we need someone to champion that. But you would, if elected, be replacing a Democrat, not a Republican. So is the work you're talking about going to be working and talking to other members of the Senate? Uh, yes, I'm certainly going to be making the case to other senators. Uh, and there are some Democratic senators uh, who don't support doing away with the filibuster. We need to make sure that, that our representatives of the Senate are committed to doing that. You did introduce legislation to suspend the gas tax, the federal gas tax, and I heard that you plan to reintroduce it again. Yes. In California, it's actually the Democrats who are the top Democrats against doing a suspension of the gas tax, and Republicans have been calling for it. Why do you think that is the right solution? I think, you know, the concern that many Democrats have about suspending the gas tax is that it funds a lot of infrastructure improvements, uh, which makes it very important. Um, the unique feature of my bill is that it would pay for the suspension of the gas tax by imposing a windfall profits tax on oil companies that are gouging. It will put Republicans to the test, though, I have to say. How much do they really support reducing the gas tax? Um, or are they more beholden to the oil companies and unwilling to support uh, a windfall profits tax on them? America went to sleep last night and woke up to the news of another mass shooting. What do you think needs to happen to stop those from continuing to happen? It will require, uh, I think, that we continue to not only fight for, for common sense solutions like an assault weapon ban, uh, like uh, a ban on extended ammunition clips, like truly universal background checks. Do you think that California is taking the right approach? Uh, recently, the governor and the attorney general announced that they are sponsoring legislation to enforce and strengthen the state's concealed carry weapons, uh, the permits. A lot of critics say that that's only going to punish the law-abiding citizens, that the criminals don't even go through that legal route. What are your thoughts on how California is addressing gun violence? I'm very proud that California has played a leading role in passing common sense gun safety legislation. The, the problem has been 
that people can bring guns from uh, across state lines. A lot of people have been paying attention to the balloons that have been flying over the country. As the former chair of the House Intelligence Committee, what can you tell us about that as the public awaits more information? The first uh, balloon that was shot down um, was clearly a Chinese surveillance balloon. The other unidentified as yet objects um, may be other kinds of balloons or they may be other kinds of aerial phenomenon. Um, and I, I wait to see what more we can learn. I was in a briefing today on it and there's still a lot of unanswered questions. The fact that we don't know though is a problem. Uh, we really do need to know what's in our airspace. Something that President Biden started off his State of the Union with was looking at Kevin McCarthy saying, I hope I don't ruin your reputation, maybe I will, but I look forward to working with you. What is your relationship like with McCarthy and do you see yourself working across the aisle with him to get what you want to get done before you potentially head off to the Senate? Uh, you know, I think I share the opinion of Kevin McCarthy that many Republicans have of Kevin McCarthy, uh, which is that he doesn't stand for anything, that he has no core set of beliefs or, um, or guiding principles. And that makes it very hard to work with someone when you don't really know where they're coming from. Uh, all that being said, um, when Devin Nunes was the chair or ranking member of the Intelligence Committee, and we had profound differences over Donald Trump and his misconduct in Ukraine, uh, with Ukraine as misconduct with Russia. Um, nonetheless, we got our annual intelligence bills done every year. Uh, we managed to get the work done. Uh, and I uh, shared President Biden's uh, view that where we can work together and get things done on behalf of the American people, on behalf of Californians, I stand ready to do it. Representative Katie Porter is the only person who has officially announced her intent to run, but more are expected to come now that Feinstein has made her official retirement announcement. Schiff says that he has been endorsed by 20 other California Congress members. The death toll in Turkey and Syria continues to rise following earthquakes. After the break, we hear from a Sacramentan on the ground in Turkey. He's bringing us a very unique perspective. We've been reporting in recent days on Californians heading to Turkey and Syria to help with recovery efforts, like a structural engineer who is from the Sacramento area. So I want to go ahead and bring in Becca Habegger, who's really been following his work there. And Becca, he says that there are lessons for California and what's happening overseas. Yeah, Alex Kit Miyamoto is the global CEO of Miyamoto International. The company bills itself as a global leader in structural engineering, earthquake resilient engineering, and disaster risk dis uh, reduction. You know, Miyamoto gives us this firsthand look on the ground in Turkey and how ready California is for a disaster like this. The town of Hatay here is just destroyed. Older buildings, this is probably one of the worst earthquake destruction I haven't seen since Sichuan to China in 2008. Kit Miyamoto, global CEO of West Sacramento-based Miyamoto International, says Turkey's building code changed in the late 90s, so anything built before about 2000 had little to no required seismic considerations in the building plans. It's a change that happened in California in the early 70s. So anything built prior to 1970, mid-1970s, concrete structures, their risk is the same as what we see here. So yeah, they will collapse. And if the magnitude 7.8 would happen, you're going to see collapses. And let's say if you happen in the Bay Area, you're going to see some certain impact in Sacramento. Because especially like Sacramento downtown, do have the, uh, we do have the uh, soft soil. So some is going to amplify the motion will destroy some of the older concrete structures. But there are effective solutions, he says. In Turkey, he's aware of about a dozen what's called base isolated hospitals. Base isolation is considered state-of-the-art technology where engineers separate the building from the ground by putting it on a roller or spring that keeps the intensity of a quake from fully reaching the structure. This is something that uh, we can learn a lot and something we could definitely should apply a lot more in California. He adds Turkey has more base isolated hospitals than California does. We have exact same technology, but we don't apply so often. Hmm. And Becca, what does he think it'll take to get more of those base isolated structures? Yeah, well, you know, Miyamoto says public opinion. I mean, he thinks it takes large earthquakes like the ones in Turkey and Syria to essentially scare the public into pushing elected leaders to pass laws requiring more seismic protections. He hopes it doesn't take, of course, a 7.8 eight earthquake oh. here before we see 
that shift in public opinion and that outcry. Yeah, and keep in mind that we can get advanced warning of major earthquakes by downloading the MyShake app. It's an earthquake early warning system that is designed and operated by the federal government. All right, and while it can't predict an earthquake, it can alert us that one is coming. And we do have more information about the app on abc10.com. That's right. Thank you so much, Becca. We appreciate it. Here are some other stories that we're following tonight. Robert Somerville, the man accused of shooting and killing a Stockton fire captain, was found guilty of second-degree murder today. The shooting happened back in January of last year. The fire captain, Max Fortuna, was responding to a dumpster fire near Crosstown Freeway when the shooting happened. And there are new details about a flight that took off in Maui and plunged close to 800 feet above the Pacific Ocean shortly after takeoff. The United Airlines Pilots Association filed a report once the plane uh, was safely touched down to its destination in San Francisco. The plane fell for about 45 seconds. Thankfully, nobody was injured. The airline isn't sure what caused the drop. And we know the name of the man who hit $2 billion for the jackpot in last fall's massive Powerball drawing. Edward Castro picked to take the cash option, which means he'll walk away with just shy of a billion dollars after taxes. California law requires his name to be made public, but other details about the winner can stay unknown. Well, let us hear it to the point, be the first to say it. Not only happy Valentine's Day, but happy tax season. And we know that a lot has changed. So if you do have questions about filing your return we're always here to get you answers. And actually, one of our viewers wrote in and asked, uh, on any of the stimulus checks, do we have to pay taxes from the very first one to the very last one? The answer is very simple, no. The IRS says that California's middle-class tax refund does not need to be reported as income. California's payments are considered general welfare for disaster relief, and the state has made these payments during a time of a major debt surplus. So, Again, if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to us. Our number is 916-321-3310. Don't forget, tax day is only two months away. You might want to mark your calendars. And this year, I got a little love on this Valentine's Day. There was a light dusting of snow, but are you wondering how things are looking tonight? Well, don't worry. We got Carly <laughs> Gomez here to break down our Valentine's Day forecast. And we're yeah. matching today, Carly. I know we pink. are matching. I'm loving it. A lot of pink today in the newsroom, but a chilly evening out there. As those winds were really picking up today, we've started to see them slow down, which is the good news. But temperatures are plummeting right now. And in the big mountain backyard, things are finally starting to calm down. Beautiful flowers out there. A shout out to our Cheyenne, who makes it always look beautiful. Temperatures are in the low 50s for Sacramento, Stockton, Modesto at 46, 46 in Marysville and Tahoe's temperatures near freezing point, if not a little bit lower than that at this point, because we are seeing that sunset and now temperatures are dropping as well. The winds coming in out of the north, that's bringing in colder Arctic air, but also those winds a little bit strong. We're seeing them anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour as we continue on through this evening. But some of the biggest areas with the big gusts here are right around 30 miles per hour. As you can see about that yellow shade there, anywhere from 25 to 30 miles per hour into your Wednesday at lunchtime. We'll still see a little bit breezy conditions in the valley. And then finally, as we move from Thursday to Friday, we do start to see those winds calm down to about 5 miles per hour. We are looking at some clouds rolling in Thursday and Friday, but most of that system stays offshore. So we're not seeing rain then. But as we start moving closer to next Wednesday, the 22nd, looks like we may actually see some more rain back into the forecast. So we'll keep our eye on that and let you know more about that. Our 10-day forecast brings those temperatures into those upper 50s, but we'll see the mid-60s returning by the weekend. All right, before we go, we want to talk about an annual tradition at ABC 10. The one and only Mark S. Allen has the distinct honor of marrying a couple every Valentine's Day. So Mark stood next to a heart arc in Old Sacramento this morning to marry Christian and Hattie. They had a beautiful backdrop of the Tower Bridge in the distance live on TV. So you just started crying when she walked up. That's true love. Uh, you're gonna have to pull it together. No, I'm about no, to marry you I'm two. No, I'm no. You two now may kiss on live TV in front of everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, those of you watching ABC 10, I present to you Christian and Hattie, the Brints. And right now, baby Christian, decades from now when you're a grown up, I don't know how you're gonna be watching this, but you're watching this. Look, your mom and dad are married. Happy Valentine's Day, everybody, from ABC 10. Back to you. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, that's so cute. So cute. Our producer Austin was already crying watching that <laughs> earlier. All right, and this marks this marks his 30th year of marrying couples on Valentine's Day. So we wish them all the success yes. and happiness. Carly and I are gonna enjoy our little candy that she brought everyone. We hope you have a great night. Enjoy. <laughs> Hey, it's Alex. Just wanted to say thank you so much for watching. I really love hearing from everyone and I hope that you'll stay in touch. Reach out to me on Facebook at Alex Bell TV, or you can email me at to the point at abc10.com or you can even send me a text message at 916-321-3310.